हेलो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द हाइपोथर्मिया द लो बॉडी टेम्परेचर इन दिस वे द थ्री स्टेज ऑफ हाइपोथर्मिया विल कैन बी हैपन सो इन दिस वे द कंटिन्यूसली एक्सपोजिंग इन द कोल्ड वेदर विल लीड टू काज द हाइपोथर्मिया दिस आर थ्री स्टेजेस ऑफ हाइपोथर्मिया द माइल्ड मॉडरेट एंड सुवियर mild can be reversible and moderate also but severe is reversible with the complication a uh, many complication can be happen so this is the hypothalamus and contain pituitary gland produce the thyroid stimulating hormone will lead to stimulate the thyroid gland to produce the energy heat for the thermoregulation while whenever we will expose in the cold environment so the cold stimulus uh, stimulus will trigger the hypothalamus to whenever the 36 degree celsius temperature will occur in our body so the regulator at 37 degree celsius is the hypothalamus we regulate the temperature in our body so it will be the nervous system involving to trigger the muscle shivering so this is the spinal cord contain a gray matter and white matter dorsal root of ganglion and ventral root of ganglion so the dorsal root of ganglion will carry the information and lead to ventral root of ganglion will lead to motor neuron will lead to muscle shivering due to the th- hypothalamus will trigger these things and in this the muscle shivering and effect to increase the temperature 37 to 38 degree celsius after the 38 degree celsius the negative feedback loop to the hypothalamus for inhibition of the further shivering further stimulation but in the case of heat stimulus whenever when we will expose in the sun or heat during the warm temperature due to due to the hot temperature it will trigger the hypothalamus and after the triggering of the hypothalamus should be the decrease of the temperature from 38 degree celsius to the 37 in this way the sweating will occur in the skin this is the skin contain epidermis dermis and fat is used for the insulation during the cold weather so this is the erector erector pili muscle which that is used for the hair uh preservation of heat but in this case the sweating and radiation and evaporation will lead to de- decrease the temperature and this radiation and vasodilation will occur of the blood vessel near the skin near the skin which that will lead to evaporation of the uh or heat exchange into the skin will lead to radiate or evaporate in the form of sweating so the heat loss will occur will lead to negative feedback to inhibit the hypothalamus function so the vasodilation vasodilation will also trigger by the heat stimulus so anyhow this let's begin to understand the cold exposure continuously will lead to here is the cold effect is the peripheral vasoconstriction will lead to stasis and in this way the stasis of the due to the endothelial injury the endothelial injury will lead to thrombosis formation and this thrombosis will block the artery or vein and after the blocking of the artery the hypoxia will occur in this way the low level of oxygen will lead to anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration of the tissue will lead to cause the ischemia and stroke and lactic acidosis the lactic acid and vascular insufficiency of the oxygen will lead to ph will decrease more acidic and can also cause the death let's begin to understand the severe hypothermia that is the danger for us so the metabolism of muscle will lead to shivering muscle more require more oxygen but low oxygen levels lead to acidosis because the oxygen level is low because our body is not consuming too much oxygen due to also the photosynthesis inhibition in the environment due to the plant dysfunction of working and the central nervous system will lead to confusion and coma in the brain cardiac effect is the uh, vasoconstriction will lead to atria fiber which that is ventricular fiber lead to cause cardiac arrest 
if respiratory we will discuss the respiratory respiratory rate will be increased and the bronchospasm due to the cold uh, cold air will move into the lungs will lead to more cold of the lungs so the mask is very important for inhibition this and respiratory drive will decrease and apnea and cold drive divers uh, sorry, cold diuresis and renal gastrointestinal motility will occur and the blood cell, the enzyme dysfunction and the platelet dysfunction and impaired will lead to coagulopathy. Let's begin to understand the cellular effect of cold in the cell. So we are taking one cell to understand the enzyme denaturation due to the optimum temperature is not available and the water will be released due to the constriction the shrinking of the cell and the dehydration will occur and the sodium calcium chloride and potassium is the electrolyte will be imbalanced the membrane will be damaged extracellular uh, positive and negative the anion and cation will lead to intracellular water crystallization and in this way you can understand that well basically the extracellular positive and negative ions will lead to intracellular water crystallization due to the extracellular imbalances will lead to crystallization and in this way the cell dysfunction will lead to cell death is known as the necrosis because the injury of the cell not apoptosis this is a programmed cell death but this is necrosis necrosis means the injury of the cell will be lead to cause death while the resuscitation of this a severe hypothermia will lead to uh, lead to rewarming of shock increase rewarming shock increase and in this way the extracellular fluid will be um, uh, extracellular fluid move into the intracellular inside of the cell and lead to edema whenever the extracellular fluid will be uh, accumulate lead to cause edema and after this resuscitation will lead to hyperfluidity and the hypofluidity in the extracellular fluid and in this way the hypothermia we have discussed in this video the low body temperature and their complication if you like this video please make sure to subscribe like and share and give the comment below to understand better so thanks for watching see you in the next video for this time bye